Welcome to Nerdy For, the comedy podcast where I, Amy Brown, ask fun and interesting people what they are nerdy for. I have a very fun, very interesting person in my costume chamber. Today we have a repeat offender. We've got a friend who's been on the show. She's come back. And her name is Carlette Jennings. Yay! Yay! You can, you can tilt it down if you want. I saw you were like... Oh, oh yeah, no. the microphone needs yeah. to be tilted so we can see you. Because you're 90% legs and 10% <laughs> torso. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know? Yeah. <laughs> That's a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> Thank you. Last time you were on the show, we talked about how at a certain age, uh, women or just people in general start looking at birds. Heck yeah. And we're like, birds. Still studying Turn them. 40. Birds. Absolutely. But now I brought Carla back because I invited her to come and roast white women with me. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> I am so grateful that you invited me for this because I am nerdy for white women. You have <laughs> legitimately. A, you have a, like a thirty-minute bit about white women in your in your set, and not to cannibalize it for my podcast, but <laughs> it slaps. Okay, it's I love very you. good. Well, and the funny thing is, okay, you know, hashtag not all white women, but yeah, yeah. Well, disclaimers up at the top. Disclaimers. Just, also, I wanted to be known that this was your idea that yeah. I didn't call you and be like, "Can I come roast white women?" <laughs> I just have to get it out. I'm my trapping system. you. Yeah, I'm gonna bring you up to Buckhead. <laughs> So you can get in trouble. Yeah, I'm like, just so you know. Um, I'm the garden club. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to say up top, uh, although I am a proud black woman, I really appreciate white woman culture. Like my spirit says white woman. Right? You, Hootie, and, Hootie and the Blowfish, right? <laughs> <laughs> so like, that's one of Make, That's, the, that's the very far in the that's white so woman. White. <laughs> You're like, What's so So white. I'm like really a bad. Cheryl Crow. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, like I like her. Like yeah. that's my right, right. Yeah, I th- this is why I think you're going to be good at this because yes. you're straddling both cultures. Yes, yeah. Yes. So yeah, and uh, uh, a skinwalker. Like, <laughs> you walks amongst wow. both sides. Okay. Yes, I do very comfortably go yeah. between. I did go to a private school. You went for to high a, school. You went to. Can I say where you went? Sure, if anyone will know it. Yeah. Choate. Yes. Choate. Went, it's a it's a prestigious boarding school in mm. New England. Yes. And yes. Th- th- then it's, people um, think I have money. But all it's them rich, Choate heads it's, out there. It's rich people street cred. Okay. Like, yes. <laughs> I actually went to school with a recent president's daughter. That's all I'll say. Oh. Did you go with a Trump person? Biden and how many children? You're not allowed to say. It's like my so my father in law went to it's Yale private. when Bush was there. Okay, I don't school. know. I can. Is that the private and private yeah. school? The Is private that the forty thousand dollars a year? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Which, by the way, my family did not have mucho scholarship. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got yeah. me there. Yeah. That's part of it. It's actually I've I've heard is part of the drive to is to have a. Uh, socioeconomic diversity in these elite private schools so they will do full scholarships even like the, get the child to the school make sure they have everything they need like full full ride scholarships which is really cool yeah I will say I think they did better than a lot of schools that weren't private schools at getting some diversity in there that's great at that time I don't know what it's like today I know, all of disclaimer the, all, the di- all the diversity <laughs> protocols are going out the door I, I, child you lucky if you got it in in the 90s like we did but that is where I started my anthropological study yes. of white women <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who's that white lady who went into the forest with all the gorillas and hung out a lot? Yes, What's Jane her? Goodall. Jane, Jane Goodall. Goodall. You're the Jane Goodall. I am the black of, Jane Goodall. You're the black <laughs> Jane Goodall of Homo sapiens. I do feel very comfortable yeah. with my Caucasian okay. sister. Mm-hmm. I made a list yes. of Let's talk about white it. lady things. Okay. okay, well, you already talked about Cheryl Crow. Take. <laughs> Taylor Swift. Oh, that's that's very white. Li- I will say this. It's all white people. It is. It is very white woman. Yes. You know, white women. And I would say maybe my white gay men friends as well. Love oh, the, the gays, the gays on Taylor, too. I, I have noticed depending on their age. They just want to go for the sparkle outfits. I think so. And it's a very young white woman thing. A lot of sequins. Did you, were, you, were you in downtown Atlanta when she played? Oh no! I, I I went downtown for something, and uh, the bar is at. I just kept being like, and I wasn't hating on anyone's outfits. I was like, yo, 
these are so many girls decked head to toe in sequins. I was like, what is yeah. happening? <laughs> yeah. And the best part was like Taylor Swift concert. I was like, oh! Which makes yeah. sense. There's and they'll right? do a cowgirl boot and yeah. then a boa. It's all, like. They all looked great. They're all looking like they have a fun time, but I was just like, there has to be a, a reason. I, maybe Taylor Swift is the like teenage white girl's pride. And we're like, I get to wear rainbow sequins and fairy wings mm. and mm-hmm. a shorty short dress and go. I like that you split up white and pride by saying white girls pride. That was very good. A good <laughs> catch because you almost could have been like teenage there's white a, pride. Yeah. And then I would have been like, I have to excuse yeah. myself. Like, oh, there's, my a black, there's a black pride. Did you yes. know that? That's how many people are in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I there is a black pride parade. Yeah, uh, here every year. You're absolutely correct. Carla was making it. I like how I like how she didn't get what you're saying. I oh, think. I didn't get it. Wh- well, I I was making a joke about white pride. Oh, I'm not gonna do the oh, hand gesture. Oh my god, <laughs> I am so space cadet I, I that was the best moment. She was like, yeah, yeah. There's even the a white. Pride. She's just like, yeah, I love the gays. <laughs> <Why don't laughs> that's how pure of heart you are as a white woman, Amy. I didn't even think about the. You white didn't even premises. think. Yeah, yeah. You, we, that's not even where you go, dude, and I appreciate that. I love are, that about we you. We are six houses down from the Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan's house. You from got me six houses down. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't no. live there anymore, right? No, he doesn't live there anymore. Okay, okay good. <laughs> and the, yeah. I'm with the, uh, the house is a little haunted. It's having a hard time keeping people in it. And oh it was goodness. abandoned for a long time. So it's got Joe, bad why juju. didn't you tell me before I, ca- right? I come here? I mean, I've been here more than once. I don't once. want to alarm you, but Stone Mountain is a stone's throw that way. Yeah. <laughs> it's very. That's a lot of Atlanta. Oh, we're in Atlanta. Yeah. Oh, Welcome like, to Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not a lot of great history. No, no. You're definitely walking yeah. on some old race's yeah, grave yeah, yeah, right yeah. now. <laughs> Right, I would get, like there was all these battles here, and I'm like, you wonder if you're gonna like find like bullets or oh. musket musket balls or something. <laughs> <Musket> <laughs> we got a musket. So t- talk about summer. How your <laughs> Joel? How your musket balls? Are they airing out okay? Do you gold bond? You got gold bond. Okay. <laughs> All right, so Taylor Swift, she's making an army of white women. You, yes. I think the last time you were on this show, you said you were a little nervous about those Swifties because if Taylor decides to work for, she's been working for good. If she decides to work for evil, oh she's God. got an army the world over. It's not, it be, goes beyond borders. This is beyond she, our politicians. She has more power. I mean, she honestly goose, does. I have goose pimples talking about that. She has more power than probably, I think, any, if she's, a, she's b- bigger than the Olympics. Social power is people can underestimate that. The thing about Taylor is she's got a lot of responsibility on those golden shoulders of hers. Yes, okay? she's very tall. <laughs> she really does because if she say it, the kiddos are going that way. And I have noticed a lot of politicians have been up in arms because Taylor said some pretty left-leaning things recently, yeah. even though she started off real Nashville and a lot of right-leaning yeah. politicians have been like, hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, <she's laughs> Shut like, your she, trap. She like, told people to go register to vote and like the numbers for like the week or two afterwards, there were like millions whoa. of unregistered young voters and they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. We don't want y'all to vote. <laughs> we make it really hard for a reason. And, and, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they are scared. And that's why I'm like, she has to be very yeah. careful what she does with all that power. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Which I know she like, there, in her movie, she flew back to Nashville to support gay rights in her, in t- Tennessee. And she's like, I have to do this. And her mother was like, I'm worried for your safety. And she's like, I don't have a choice here. Like, these are my friends and they're getting prosecuted in our state. I need to go. And then I was like, she's a real grown up. That's She good. is. She's walking towards some like Dollywood type Oh, yeah. Like okay. when the kids who are like 12 now are like 60 years old, they're going to be looking at her the way they look, look at, at Miss da- Parton. Uh, yeah. I think. Yeah. What would Dolly do? Oh, yeah. Dolly Parton's great. Yeah. yeah. She is great. And I'm hoping, I, I can only hope that's where Taylor's going to be. I, that's, a, you know, it's very interesting that you pulled that connection. Um, you taking notes? Yeah. Dolly Parton, Taylor Swift, and Dolly Parton. I hope. I hope. I don't know which way Taylor's going to go, but if she stays cool. Right? She's still blonde. <laughs> she's oh, they're she's... writing songs. Heck yeah. They got the sequence. They play the guitar. Do you like Taylor? I, um, okay. So, if as a white woman <laughs> in this room, the Disclaimer. only one, I 
enjoy watching the video of her concert with people who love her because it's infectious, their energy. I did notice the song started to sound a lot the same. <laughs> and I couldn't tell if it was a new song or not, except for the outfit had changed. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not I'm not manic about it. And yeah. I don't put it on to listen to. But I don't put on any music to listen to. I got to be honest. I, I'm a robot. I don't know. I don't. I'm so bad at music. So yeah. No, but I, but you don't really have any like daughters. Her. I don't have any. Yeah, that might I be noticed. how how you relate to your daughter. Yeah. White female friends have all been to her concerts, and they always have to put a disclaimer when they're talking to me. They always go, "Well, my daughter loves it." I'm like, "It's okay if you like it too. You don't have to play you these games." <laughs> <laughs> You have to dress your daughter up and put her at the yeah. front of the line so you can get tickets. But I will say, <laughs> all of my friends who've been to concerts, I shouldn't say all, but the majority have had little white daughters at home. Yeah. <laughs> and little white girls, it's like something that they can't, it's like, you know, yeah, they it's it. like what Raven was to millennials. Like, it's this very like... Ooh, I love it. Like What's she just Ra connects. Oh, is Raven a person? You remember, uh, you know that. So Raven, Raven, Simone. Raven Simone. That's so Raven, yes. Yes, millennials who are children of the 90s. It was on television. I remember cable. babysitting. I mean, yeah. Yes. When I babysat in those days, because I'm, you know, sort of elder millennial, exennial, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the littler, the littler ones would like Raven would come on and they'd like stop what they were doing. And I feel like that's tailored to these little girls right mm -hmm. now. Like that is the power she has. What's uh um oh, what's her um she lives in New York now, um and is obsessed with uh, housewives. Sammy Eastwood. Sammy Eastwood. We did it. You're, we're at the dinner. We're I was at that dinner. Going to three back to back. Remember that? Constance. Now she doesn't have daughters. She just got she in. She just loves Taylor. She's, She's just Sammy Eastwood, my sweet friend. I think we're trying to get her back on the pot. She has a good job, and she says, "I have no prospects and no children. I'm going to spend all of my money on Taylor I do, Swift I do tickets." Get that. I just remember she said because she wouldn't tell us how much she spent, but she did say, <laughs> "I had to delay my move," <laughs> which I was like, "That's a." That's an amount. It is. It is. I have seen the cost of some tickets for Taylor. I mean, tickets to concerts everywhere right now. I don't oh, care yeah. who it is. I don't care. Oh, people who it are is. flying. It's cheaper to fly to Europe. I know someone who just did it. Get the ticket there with the t with the hotel with the international flight than it is to buy tickets in the U.S. I have some friends, white women. Did again, you tell me that? Went all the way. No, oh. went all the way to Stockholm mm. to see Taylor. You know, I mean, I know that. Uh, for for once, they're actually breaking up a corporation, but they're making Live Nation a tick ma Ticketmaster. They're so breaking. They them have up. to. It's antitrust. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, they should be doing that for everything. They should do that for Disney. They did back they in the thirties. I mean, they're coming around again. I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> now that we're in the next thirties, they're like, should we go back to yeah. caring Everyone about that? Everyone clumped up again. Like, it's weird. <laughs> we stopped all these regulations. I thought Ronald Reagan had a lot of good ideas. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen a while. Nothing's trickling down. <laughs> uh, really dry on the bottom. <laughs> oh my goodness! Love it. Yeah. So I think she's a white woman to look out for. She is. I keep her. Keep her. Keep her. Keep her in, an eye on the head on the swivel. An eye on the pocket. I don't. If know you don't words. know that at this point, you've been living under a rock. Right. Right. Who would be the second most? Okay. And the who would be the Taylor Swift of the black community? Beyonce. Oh, Beyonce. Duh. Without, I don't even have to think about it. Duh. And I'm one of those women who has. How many times have I seen Beyonce now? Maybe five. I don't go oh. to every concert. Beyonce is I've your seen her five Taylor times. Swift. Man, I went to <laughs> Renaissance. Renaissance at least in Atlanta, was both the blackest and the queerest experience I've ever had. It was a bunch of black women and a bunch of queer men. Oh, it sounds fabulous. And it was a runway getting into Mercedes Benz. I had a gorgeous outfit. I'm going to tell you, I had this mm -hmm. headpiece. Oh, my God, I was giving, yes. like, late 70s Grace Jones. I had this lovely, because everything for the first Renaissance album was about the sequins and the rhinestones. And I had this lovely, like, sequined headpiece. Ooh. So I wore my hair very, like, Egyptian. You know, very yes. straight Cleopatra. middle part. Very Cleopatra. I assume, right? <laughs> That's yeah. how she did her hair. That's what they say. And I put this headpiece on. Um, oh my gosh! Yeah. And the boys loved me. Is yes. all the boys that yeah. count. That sounds like so much me. fun. Oh my gosh! I had a wonderful outfit. Everybody had wonderful outfits and big fans, and they were flopping their yeah, fans flop all the over. Yeah, the fans. Here, I got one right here, but it doesn't make the right sound. He's like, yeah, you need like, one of those plop, ridiculously plop, sized ones. Plop. 
Yeah, and it's crink. Yeah, so fun. So fun. So fun. But that is our our. So I understand Swifty Madness. I've been there. Beyonce's a, a little older. I think she's probably a good ten years older at least than Taylor, if not more. So I think I think she's beginning to phase out of the same craze oh. she had maybe of, 10 20 years ago like doing a world tour that's exhausting and you're trying to raise your children not like, only yeah. that but i don't know if the very young kids are, are like there's so oh, many well, small album. children <gasps> you know how there's Beyonce's so many kids. coming for taylor she did a country album i don't know if she's coming for taylor but well, she saw a, a, a pocket because taylor left the country she did she's gonna go dip into the country and taylor then come went back to pop, pop. Beyonce went country, country. Um, which it's means like a you and can. Yang symbol. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, Beyonce can. can just do whatever she wants. She's just very talented. And you know what? If she never she's really cool. sells another record again, she'll be all right. So, so she's just doing it for the love of the game. At this point now, it reminds me of like when I realized like Madonna had hit her 40s and she was still doing fun stuff at the time, um, like that song Hung Up. Uh, and she had this album I loved in the mid 2000s, Confessions on the Dance Floor. But that was like Madonna, like in her 40s, like I still got it. But there is a point where the younger people are not going to connect anymore with mm -hmm. Beyonce. Okay. She's currently a mother of three. She's already in her mid 40s. How mo yeah. how long before young people are going to be like Beyonce. Beyonce is my mother's Beyonce's 42. thing? Yeah, she's forty two. Yeah, I would have said thirty five. No, she's closer in age to me. I always than think she of her as young, Taylor. Young. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well. So her time, you know, certain people are forever, but that doesn't mean the young people are yeah. going to continue to care the same. This it's is, inevitable. This is what. So Beyonce is going to age beautifully. Obviously, what happened she to Madonna? To. Madonna has gone off the Looney Tooney pads. At some point, people got to stop saying yes to people just because they have money. Like, or are famous. Yes, it's like, it's have giving predatory. Yeah, she just, she just got way, way too much plastic surgery. Yes, Do it's predatory good? at this <laughs> point that doctors are like, okay, if you want it. At some point, you have to be like, Ma'am, I cannot put I my can't name, name on, on that, that that work. That work, <laughs> right? Can't do it. So okay, those are the famous people. I will say what you're talking about for like the Beyonce. I, I saw uh, Ooh, Janelle I Monae mm -hmm. when they came to the Fox. Also, another great like everyone's outfits great. Yes, and Janelle Monae, way way Who's more. Who's this? Janelle Jan Monae. Janelle Monae. Janelle Monae. Uh, way more of a like queer focus. Uh, yes, yes. Beyonce saw it, but like. It was so fun going. It was just like, look at all these little gender bent, gender queer people and just like beautiful, great outfits. We're yes. not roasting white women, I realized. We're just saying no. how cool everyone is. I was going to say, well, this is turned into like cool concerts. Shit. Okay, Stanley Cups. Okay, bitch. Why oh, you got wow. a Stanley Cup? I will you tell you. Cup? No, I don't. I can't that see myself paying that, that much. That. <laughs> no, yes. Oh, my God. Yes. It's too much money. Sure. It's for why are you doing this? White... And why are you buying it for your, your daughter? That's You're just teaching your daughter that you got to buy the expensive thing to fit in with your friends. That's not what you were supposed to learn in your life. You're supposed like to learn to be a weirdo. $50 for a cup. Yes. Also, they have, uh, if they get screwed up inside, uh, they have lead in it. So like if oh. it gets like scratched is up that, inside, that it's been it's been the it's studies. It's giving you lead poisoning. Yeah, so like that it, causes brain damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's why all boomers are mad <laughs> because they have lead poisoning. They have lead. Yeah, not from the paint. You're not supposed to eat yeah, the paint yeah. chips. Listen, oh. all I know is when I first heard about Stanley Cups, and this is like six I months thought, ago. I thought we were talking about hockey. hockey. Did you? I thought we were talking another about very too. beloved <laughs> white thing. Yeah. Like a lot. Right? <laughs> Um, and so I was like, man, why do I keep seeing tweets about yeah. hockey? This must be the season. I th is the Stanley Cup? The, sorry, did I interrupt you? No. Is the Stanley Cup the UGG boots of our generation? It might be. That's a good one. Because those are like $100, right? Or they uh, were back in the day. Yeah, yeah, they're definitely more than that now. I yeah, mean. it was definitely you were throwing down if you came out in an UGG boot. You're like, yeah, my mom and my dad bought me UGG boots. And even the teenage girls who don't have jobs somehow like get a, I, Stanleys. That was for sure a, 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 a very white woman's shoe or a boot. The yeah. a boot, yes. Yeah, yeah. It was yes. originated for a surfers in California to keep their feet warm after they got out of the ocean. Isn't that a cute origin Is story? Is that really why? Yeah, it's not just meant to make your your classmates feel bad about themselves for not being able to afford <laughs> Ugg boots and a Stanley cup. I did not know that's why it originated because that's an Australian made product. 
Oh, um, sorry. It might have been the surfers in Australia. Might have been. I probably put in the, <laughs> the, the place on an accident. You you might not be. That might be how it got popularized in the U.S., though, because I feel like it felt like a very L.A. thing to see yeah. these girls in like their juicy couture oh. sweatsuits. Oh, yeah. The juicy and the butt. Yes. And then the Lululemon. Yes. Oh, yeah. So your whole outfit cost seven hundred dollars and you're 12. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> but this is why I say that like. I feel like internally, I really, I, I, white women are like, my spirit is a white woman because I like the idea of throwing away money on some bull. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you have enough money to just like, you ain't working, you're at yoga all day, <laughs> carrying your little puppy in your purse, buying the puppy Starbucks, and you Getting got- Getting nails done. Yes. I'm like, man, I, I wish. I don't have that life, but I aspire Certain things are aspirational. Uh, but is this seems so, oh, what's the word? Like, not important. Superfluous. Yes. It is superfluous. Vapid. Vapid. It feels so vapid. And like, what are we trying to emulate here? Oh, yeah, Kardashians. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, Gwyneth Paltrow's out there. She's like the whitest, oh, waspiest white woman. woman. Ooh, yeah. well, Gwyneth is her crazy. Da- her dad white might be Jewish, show. but it didn't take. As no, a, like, nothing he, about her says Jewish to me. <laughs> she's so, she's so I'm from white. Queens. She oh. glows in the dark. That's how white she is. <laughs> she's, she's ridiculous with her like, guys, the best olive oil is 400 bucks. And she may not be wrong, right, in terms of a product, but who fit in a body? Who, who, who buying $400 of Nobody's oil? Nobody's buying He's this $400 olive she's oil. Got, she, she's got the right idea, though. You just need, instead of getting 400 people to buy a $20 <laughs> bottle of olive oil right. she's getting 20 people, people to, to buy, buy the 400 dollar and you're so you're yeah. saving money on overhead because you don't have to store yeah. so many and bottles she, and then she sends a vagina candle with it and yeah she like and she's always wearing white and her like her furniture's all white I'm like we get it you know when your period's coming Gwen the paltrow good for you <laughs> she also like famously like does not eat right like wasn't she just la- in the last year like telling her little followers how oh, like how little. you know wasn't she an almond mom which is yes. a white woman just thing. Yes. write that down yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we literally last episode we talked yeah. about almond really moms. yeah okay that's awesome that you did so that all of your followers already know what we're talking about we don't have to review but for those who are just jumping in really quickly there are these moms that are like i had an almond to satiate my hunger yeah you're supposed to chew it a lot so and i'm like baby an, an almond what <laughs> Like, a joy? What? Almond yeah. joy. <laughs> what is it about this An almond, almond nougat log? Those are yummy. You can get those at the, the truck stops in the south. But listen. A and pecan log. The, the problem with it is those same moms really want to preserve themselves and have beautiful, fresh skin. And I'm telling you, after a certain age, if you lose too much weight, the it gets, skin. It gets droopy. It, yes. And you're not going to be able to have both without a lot of money and getting under a knife. So like, ladies have more than an almond, keep your skin tight. Yeah, there was, well, I mean, that's what's happening with Ozempic. Uh, my um, my doctor said, uh, women who are going through perimenopause and menopause get Ozempic because we're getting insulin resistant and then you lose weight and your face, there's Ozempic face and Ozempic butt. We talked about it with Gay Bob on an episode in June. Yeah, people are losing their butts. It's the P- worst thing I've ever heard. Joel's up in arms. He's going to save the butts. Stop <laughs> taking anything, Ozempic. make butts bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Which and, is a conundrum because this is the generation that's just been doing BBLs. Great. Yes. And, the, and Madonna then, had one. Madonna yeah. had a butt implant. Hers is a and little nuts, And it's very dangerous because there's a big, I guess there's a big vein back there that people, if they hit it, you die. Sometimes risk are worth it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I love that. You're, yeah, maybe you're a black man inside of a it's woman's body. It's not a black body. man thing. Everyone should appreciate a good yeah. big butt. A good big butt. That's it. Okay. As a white woman, when I moved to, from Colo- Boulder, Colorado, like That's literally white. one time, Write I sat down. The whole state. The, <laughs> whole, the whole state, state yeah. is Ooh, very white. Kenton and I, my husband, we were in Colorado and we saw a black person and we were in our car, we're like, yay. Like, <laughs> I didn't know what you were about to say. Wel- <laughs> you're you're like, welcome here. Like, <laughs> Do you know I have a good friend originally from New York where I grew up in the city and he moved to Colorado, white guy. Jewish. Uh, he moved to Colorado and he instantly moved back. He thought he was going to love Denver after visiting, but he was like, the lack of diversity was really like, yeah. startling for yeah. me. 
Yeah. He was like, you know, like it's a, and that's what I could say that about a lot of towns that come off as cool towns. Um, and obviously not all white people care, but <laughs> but for those who grew up around a lot of diversity, I've had mm. like white friends be like, I had to move back because I thought it was going to be like Utopia. And then I got it, there and I was like, wait it's a minute. It's so jarring leaving Atlanta because I, I grew up in a smaller town that was like more predominantly white. And so, you know, but uh, we there, you know, there was still some diversity. But now, like, anytime I go back to home in Chattanooga, I'm just like, oh, shit. Like, this <laughs> is... This is so much more just obvious whenever you go back home instead yeah. of just being, because like, you know, there's everybody, not just black, but so many di- like diversity in Atlanta of just going out to any store mm-hmm. and it's not even like, well, you're on that yeah. side. You're like, no, it's uh, literally everywhere. And then Dulce told me, or no, sorry, I saw it on a podcast. My <laughs> listening to podcasts yeah. in my real life have started coming together. She said that uh, people who are in first class, Dulce Sloan, she's a comedian yeah. on a television, the people and the white people who are in first class coming out of Atlanta are used to seeing black people in first class because Atlanta has so many uh, upper upper middle class mm-hmm. black people here, and they mm-hmm. fly and they fly in first class. And mm-hmm. when she's flying out of other cities that aren't so diverse, she gets looked at up and down like, "What are like it's what you must be possible. famous if you're up here? You're like you couldn't just be a banker." Well, and see, I'm used to. Okay, I'm from Queens, this is where I grew up. So a couple things about Queens, I'm with my little Queens pride here. Number one, it's got the most, now I heard this, you know, how many years ago now? Uh, maybe less than 10, but still. Uh, one of the most diverse counties in America is okay. Queens County. I'll allow it. Um, and uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a real white woman thing right yeah. there. I was she in was character. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't allow this thing that, that, that predates me to happen. Yeah. Like, oh, I love man. that. Yeah, that's your best white woman. Yeah. <laughs> Go on and say that. Continue to exist. I yeah. don't need to summon the manager quite yet. Please continue. I love that. So, yeah, very diverse, but also, and I, this fact is from a few years back to the largest county in America where the median household income in black households was higher mm. than the median household income in white households. Yeah. And that was in Queens County. Yeah. So, you know, you overall, I'm used to a place also where black folks are pretty middle class or more and yeah. doing well. And then I came to Atlanta, which is, you know, not the same demographics specifically, but still a diverse place, still see black folks doing well. And so, yeah, you know, I I love traveling for funsies to mm-hmm. cities like, you know, like a Denver or, a, yeah. you know, just, but it does strike me when I go places. I'm like, ain't no black folks around here. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I have two, I have two, okay, I have three, three, three follow-up things. First of all, how does that make you feel? Because if I walked into, I'm trying to like, Think about how it would make to put when myself in, in your minority. shoes. Like when I like to walk into a room full of guys mm-hmm. would and I'm the only girl that might be like, oh, mm-hmm. I don't necessarily feel all the way safe here. Do right, you feel right. like all the way not safe in some, some conditions? So quick answer is that unless it's a gay bar. Hold up. Yeah. <laughs> then oh, yeah I feel no, fabulous. absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> quick answer is I feel comfortable, but I think there are way more opportunities growing up for black folks to be in all white spaces and see that as something I have to put myself through for advancement. Like Mm -hmm. I was raised to think I had to, you know, take, for example, the educational opportunity that I had Mm -hmm. to go off to this fancy private school was like a don't pass this up. My parents never said, you know, but you should stay home where it feels safer. I think nowadays parents think like that more. Think about like how safe is that kid going to feel? But when we were growing up, it was like take the opportunity and figure it out later. Right, for um, sure, yeah. But I don't know if white people often feel a pressure to put themselves in the same situation. So like how many white people feel like, well, I better go and put myself in a place where uh, I'm in the minority right. racially right. for advancement. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. I feel like so. So I've this is like done to, it a million going times. to Hong Kong or something to work. Or, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think in those rare cases, white people have been like, yes, I moved for this work opportunity, especially mm-hmm. if they have like some sort of government position. And it's like, yeah, we're living in Africa for the next six years. We're living in yeah. Asia and they have to acclimate to the local culture. But rarely, yeah. I think, That's is it a very thing. American thing for like white Americans. So this is why I think I'm 
good at doing code, like the code like let's talk right? code switching and talking about like I could do the roast to white women because I feel like I've been in a lot of situations yeah. where you know some of my best friends not all but some of my best friends are white women. Oh mm-hmm. really? I have a black friend. <laughs> <laughs> but you say just one. <laughs> Let me tell you it. something. That's you come to my like parties that. as a white woman, you not gonna be alone. <laughs> I make sure that you have other white people Dude. to turn to. <laughs> Dude. You're never by yourself here. <laughs> I, do, I do comedy in Atlanta. I have more than one black friend. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I will make a joke about this, though. My family's from the Caribbean on both sides of my family. And, you know, not all my relatives grew up like I did and had that experience. And I heard after my wedding uh, and my husband is half Greek, half Puerto Rican. And between our and he grew up in like rural North Carolina. So between his friends, my school friends, his family, my mom told me how like a lot of the aunties came away from my wedding like, well, it was a good time, but there was a lot of white people there. <laughs> <laughs> like they were blown away. <laughs> How many white people they had to suffer for a night of free drinks and dancing? <laughs> That's wild. That's like when blonde people go to China. And they, the people lose their minds. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I do think my family expected that of me, though. So ah, that's too funny. Yeah. So when I was living, so I went back to visit Colorado recently, and I was at a, a fancy like hip hippie bar, hipster bar. At a hotel, and the bartender was tall, redheaded, white guy, and mm-hmm. his name was Kyler. Kyler. They're making new kinds of white people in Colorado, Kyler. folks. Mm-hmm. Half Kyle, half Tyler, Kyler. So it was, we'll get ready. There's a new brand of them coming out. I will say, although stereotypically we have made fun of black folks for their naming systems throughout the years, white people are really coming with some crazy stuff. We're catching up. And yeah, we're catch- <laughs> it's not fully <laughs> caught up. Um, I watch a reality TV show uh, where the people are like from like utah and their kids names are like mckelty oh, and like a, yeah they're just making up names making up out names. there like midwestern white people who have no black influence are yeah. doing the same they are out there just they're like getting creative you know yeah. oh yeah. yeah they're coming up with all kinds of wild stuff so i'm like it ain't just uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah we had a yeah. guest on he's gonna name one of his daughters tamantha yeah see what i'm saying like <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever look at a yeah. Rashika again yeah. if you're going to name your child Tamantha. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> same, same. Same, same. So when I moved from Colorado to here, mm-hmm. I was like the first day walking around um, the grocery store over in Ansley. And a black gentleman said, girl, you're wearing that dress. And I was like, you felt good, didn't I you? think I'm going to like it here. <laughs> I, guess I, 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 I started gaining weight because I moved south. They don't let you be fat and white in Colorado. No, no. baby. There's they too give, much skiing. They give you a fourth of a cup of avocado if you're lucky. <laughs> yeah. This, yeah. So it was nice. No, here in the south, they'll appreciate. And, and I will say, uh, we will appreciate a little meat on them bones. Yeah. Okay. So for all my white sisters who are feeling some way and they're trying to deal with body acceptance, come home. Okay. <laughs> you ain't got to get this. I just imagined like, um, cause you know how when you're bigger, you have a nice decolletage shelf and like a love shelf just for heads to rest upon. And so like, the one with the big tits is welcoming the other one with the big tits and they're both resting their heads on each other's. <laughs> Big this sounds tea like something you be looking at on your own. Oh, we oh. Forgot, uh, uh, Storm oh. Ortiz was on a few episodes ago. We forgot Amy's going to sleep with a woman in the next couple of years. So Joel put on his vision board that I turn into a lesbian. <laughs> I'm not putting on my vision board. I'm just saying what the future is. And you're not going to be a lesbian. You're going to... Just dabble. Dabble to bisexuality. Okay. You, had, you had a lot of very specific questions and scenarios you brought up to Storm. I will say I could see that. You oh, give off sure. curiosity. I... <laughs> Am I wrong, listeners? Maybe. If you've been with Amy Maybe. enough, Maybe. does she not give off curiosity? I have a slipped rib and you're making it hurt because you're making I'm so me laugh sorry. so hard. <laughs> I am. So wait, I give off curiosity. Like, I want to learn new words and about culture or no, about I want to see what not vaginas a, yes. look like. Not yeah. intellectually curious. Let's be clear. Yeah. <laughs> you give off no intellectual curiosity. I, it is sexual oh, curiosity. <laughs> 
I just, I'm curious. I don't know. I don't, I don't watch porn. So I have to ask people questions in the have streets. You, have you never been into, no, never I've, a little phase? A couple here and there. I'm not yeah. like, I guess the culture is now that people go home after work and they watch porn until the morning and then they go you back to work. You said now as if porn hasn't been around longer well, like, than we have. In the last 20 years or whatever. Since it became available a la carte on the computer. Yeah, sure. Sure. Okay. They would do- it's been a lot of sexual discovery uh, for Amy the last couple episodes. Yeah, just asking people. Wink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so okay, I have a list of white things. White women stuff. Okay, is this a white woman? Um, scented candles. You know, I'm going to say that's women in general. Okay. I think women in general like they scent a candle. I saw, so one of these like late influencer ladies I follow, mm-hmm. she burnt down her she shed with her scented candle. You're doing too much now. <laughs> Can you imagine? I'll say a she shed. That's a white woman. Thing. Yeah, she had a she shed in her backyard to write. To write know, and she burnt it down with her candle. I feel like more and that's, more we're starting to all do the same white stuff. White on white though. crime there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do love that. <laughs> I do feel like uh, there's there's um, a whole generation of black women now doing some of this stuff. Well, Good, yeah. This is my this is my question. not Taylor Swift, and we can see it because of social media. <laughs> and this is probably just because once again, uh, society hates women. Why can man? Why can it be a man cave so it can be inside of the house or attached to? And then why is it a she sheds where she has to go in the backyard? I know, I know why. why. Pick me. I have my hand up. Yeah. It's because when I'm in my house. I look at everything that needs to be cleaned, put away. Uh, Someone's okay. S-H-I-T is out. Usually it's mine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the dishes. I'm going to go eat a snack instead of doing what I'm supposed to do. And the she shed is just your own little space. Uh, and you can just shut sense. out the phone ringing, the kids yapping, the yeah. husband yeah. Okay. okay. I love that. That was thoughtful of you to, to well, stick I, up, though, for well, the no, women. I, just, I was just curious of why it was specifically like a dip. But that does make a lot of sense. But that also is tied into society hates women. So you're expected to do things around the house but not the males for yes i mean yeah. if you're married to my husband who's a perfectionist he has those tendencies too so yeah. he's he, it bug, bugs him more that the house is messed up than it does my, did me now i will say i think some of what you have there's a spectrum of white womanness yeah, yeah. some of it is just woman stuff uh-huh. and some of it's very white yes yes, yes. that's what so we're here to I'm gonna let you we're, we're i'm gonna let you it. throw it at me we're and i'll tell get you into it. how white it is um <laughs> I, so I just got <laughs> the she damn it I just lost what I was gonna say barf of ronies that's fine oh, okay this is a dish dishy one okay uh, and this might just be who I'm hanging out with okay and my experiences in comedy clubs okay there is and wineries there <laughs> Is a level of white wine, white lady drunk that is sloppy and awful and the worst person to have in your audience. And I've never seen a black woman do it. I've never seen a black woman. I don't know if I've seen a black woman drunk. Do all three of us agree that this is a thing? And and, yeah. and there are going to be some white women that are going to be mad about this. But absolutely. It's not that black women don't drink wine. But there is a Chardonnay mom that is Beyond a specific, a different <laughs> galaxy. It I, is. I like. I'm. Sh- I, yes. I've seen no, black absolutely. women drink. I've never seen a black woman drink to the point of pointing a finger, being obnoxious, yelling before you're even talking about something. Like, well, we like to make noise when we get together the whole time. See, be that's a, the a difference. Cackle, white, be a people, big laugh. white people hold back so much that I think uh, when you finally let <gasps> loose. It's too it's much. It's a teapot exploding. It is. it is too much. Black people are very comfortable. If we want to cackle and laugh and be loud, yeah. we want to do that wherever. White people are very like, shh, 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 let's be reserved. And then mm-hmm. when the real them come out, it's a nightmare. It blows out. If y'all would just be. It's a big load. Yeah. <laughs> if y'all would just let it out the entire time, it would be less it would, embarrassing. It would be less embarrassing. <laughs> but it's, you're right. There it's is. rough. And it's wild because they sound mean, these white women, and then be like, oh, my God, I love you. You're my favorite. And I'm like, you were a nightmare my whole set. It's so true. <laughs> it's you- always the ones that you hate yeah. the most that want to come up to you afterwards and yeah, be like, was, can I we take you. a picture together? And be like, you. no, bitch, please leave me alone. Uh. Yeah. At least leave a tip. <laughs> I, I wonder if they're in a full blackout too. Like if they're like this, that's their heart. Their, their setting is can't like, oh, this is what I also want to talk about. The word Karen. Okay. Because this okay. is, um, I've heard that. So some people think the word Karen is just a bossy lady who's t- mouthing off where she shouldn't. 
and then other people think it's specific to race and doing a hate crime and like reporting someone who's not doing anything wrong because of their color. I think it's like different levels of care. Yeah, they're different levels. Yeah. I, I don't think it's specific to hate crime. I wouldn't go that far. I think you could Karen way before it becomes a hate crime, but there have been people who carried Karen'd themselves <laughs> into hate yeah. crime. You know, I, it's gone extreme, as we saw with that lady, remember, who called the cops the of the guy bird watching. Oh my gosh, okay. He, had a, <laughs> he was walking around wearing a, a bike helmet without his bike. He was, and it was attached. He, that's how dorky this. this yes. But and she was like, I don't feel uncomfortable. It was a blur. <laughs> she was freaking out. Now, just when I was looking at him, I would be worried that he was insane because he was wearing his helmet. <laughs> <laughs> he was walking around a park wearing a helmet. Mm -hmm. And that's where you're like, oh no. But nerds need to have activities I don't know. Too. I'm not going to say why she was freaking out, but I was like, why is he wearing a helmet? That's the weird part. Not his skin color. <laughs> she she definitely like weaponized the like woman. Th and she said she was going to do it. She's like, well, I'll call the cop. Like, you know, there's that extreme. But I think the less extreme is there's definitely like a uh, um, entitlement culture that can happen with some women. <gasps> yes. Um, um, do, uh, my room's not ready. Uh, <laughs> it's. I've been sitting here for four seconds and I haven't gotten my wine yet. And I'm going to act as if everyone around me doesn't exist. I can remember, and this is going to be so small. It definitely wasn't a hate crime, right? This is so small, but this is what I mean. I can remember I used to take this weekly spin class in Buckhead. And I went with some friends and there used to be like this line to get into the class so that you could get a bike every week. And I'll Ooh. never forget... Uh, she had to be probably like closer to 60 years old, very buckhead looking. So we know what race I'm talking about. <laughs> and she saw a literal line in the gym. You don't have to know what the line is for. But if you see a line, you assume, man, I just got here. I'm probably at the back of it. She walked past the line and into the room and hopped on a bike. And I was at the front of the line. <laughs> Oh my God. And I'd never seen someone so unaware. And there had to be 40 people lined up. It wasn't, Whoa. if there were two or three of us, you could say maybe I didn't realize it was lined They're talking or something. 40 people lined up and she just came in with her head held high. And I was like, that is the level of white entitlement I aspire to. I'm going to be, I couldn't even be mad at her. <laughs> I said, for you to ignore 40 people and just walk in. Yeah. And when the instructor called her back, because the instructor was like, what just happened? Yeah. She was like, oh, <laughs> I just uh -huh. I just wanted a bike and it's like so did all these people yeah like making a literal like yeah curve around yeah. the gym and she like somehow didn't see it she was just like oh I don't I don't so again, I had a thing I wanted go on a bike too I go to the front <laughs> you know yeah. what? let's all do this I next time I'm in line at a buffet I'm just gonna go to the front cut off everyone <laughs> I'm going to start taking the food with my hands and sticking the cupcake right in my mouth, not putting it on my plate and waiting until I get to the table. <laughs> and it just, I was like, I what like did you think we were you're doing? You're such a people pleaser that you're just going to go up and go, I, I, I'm so sorry. And then you're going to give everyone $5 and get in the back of your life. <laughs> You're not even gonna do the real bit. You're just gonna be like, no. I'm sorry that I had a bad thought. No, this is maybe we should put the, empower ourselves in our seven, like when we're old, to be like yeah. that, just like the, the front of every line. You are so sweet, though. I don't <laughs> see you as a Karen. You I'm have still, on oh. paper all the makings of what could be, but then you hang out with you and you're like, oh, but no, that's oh, yeah, you, could, you could be awful. Oh. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have the house to be awful. I have the car to be awful. You have the income to be awful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I do have the eczema that keeps me humble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if they give you extreme if they give you a skin cream good enough, well ah oh, shit. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's what it is. Oh golly. Um so <laughs> I had no, I had Karen in my my set as a joke. Like my husband my son my children called me a Karen, blah 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 blah. Your and children. Uh, they, were, they were kidding too, and there were it was in South Carolina at a, at a winery, and it was all white room and the, a table of older, uh, distinguished black ladies, and they stopped laughing, and they didn't laugh for a long time after that. And I was like, "What happened?" And it, it was the Karen joke. I think they assumed it was a racist thing or something like. That's so I took it. I took it out of my set after that. I was like, "This is oh, not no. worth it," because those are the people I want to let have laughed the most. Let me say this though: don't take anything out out of your set based on just one group. And now, I can't if you go see back. it go wrong two I've or got three white times, 
Let it go wrong a few times. I'm not going to say the N word anymore. How am I going to live? I need to express myself. I used to have a bit about the word Karen. I don't do it anymore because I feel like it's a played out it topic is. now. Yeah, the Karen. But it the was Karens such a good joke. On. I do the real Karens in this world. <laughs> like, it was such a good joke. I do hate that. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, All right, yeah. What other white woman you ready? shit? Okay, yeah. yeah. So we did the white. We did the white wine drunk. Oh, this is one of my theories about the white wine drunk lady. Usually, she's thin. She can't and hold her liquor. As a white woman who went to a women's college, we we have been put on so many crazy diets because we're not allowed to have a badunka dunk. And I think as they diet all day, they go to the bar. Mm. They have two glasses of white wine on an empty stomach and then they're in total blackout going crazy not an empty stomach they have eaten that almond that almond yeah the almond <laughs> already and it's not soaking up the chardonnay it's not it's not enough <laughs> <laughs> they need a cracker in there with it too okay so yeah that's the white wine drug um okay so i have okay i want to talk about this what yes. is the difference between an up white woman, up tight, oh. <laughs> up white, up white. Up tight white woman, <laughs> micromanaging, you, you see her in your head, micromanaging yes. everybody. Okay, uh, soccer's on Tuesday at two and every, you're going to bring the orange peels and you're going to be the- That's the, shades of Karen. What's the difference between uh, like an organized room mom <laughs> and we, someone with ang- straight up anxiety? Like, do you think uh, that white women get uh, undertreated for anxiety disorders because they're like, that's just what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be working yourself into a tizzy, making sure everyone's business is right. I hear you. That's an interesting theory, except that other people have anxiety and don't grate on nobody's nerves. See what oh. I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm going to have to I'm going to have to say that's not good enough. Because I don't notice other people's anxiety coming out in the same way. Mm. Like, there is that, like, I get exactly what you're saying. It's like, okay, I'm not a parent, but I'm sure that when you parented, you'd meet that, yes, that uptight white woman who's got to have everything her way. and, And I honestly don't know how she exists in her group of friends because other white women know when it's too much. It's not yeah, like you point. only notice it when you're of another race. Mm-hmm. I have seen yeah. white women talk like eat their own. Okay, talking about <laughs> they'll talk about that one friend and be like, "I can't with her," and it's like, like "See, like, y'all know it too." Yeah, it's like <laughs> we, I wonder if there's like people like you can't even make, you can't vacation with them because they know they don't have a vacation setting. This is real. Uh, I went to school with enough white women to know that this is. It's something that I'm so glad you're bringing up important topics. (laughs) (laughs) There are those white women who like you want to love them, but you know, shit done. Bless their hearts. I mean, this is who you want for your doctor. You want the woman who's like dotting the eyes, trot like the T's. Like, no, you're putting the you put the medication in your mouth, not your butthole. We've been over this a thousand times. (laughs) (laughs) Have you had to be told that? (laughs) (laughs) That's why I say shades of curiosity. They're not. And Amy's calling her doctor. He's like, most things just go in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, this is not. <laughs> I'll let you know yeah. when it's yeah. for the butt. How yeah. about that? Let's just yeah. assume. You need, you, you got, you're abusing the personal yeah. number I gave you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is for emergency. Yeah. <laughs> I think I would like an uptight white person one to be my lawyer and like make like in a contract situation. I'm going to read everything, dot the eyes, like, uh uh-uh, uh, no, not this. This is wrong. We, this is not what real. we talked about. There's very few spaces where we need that uptight white woman, okay. actually. I think you could do just as good with a normal, cool-ass white woman being your doctor or your lawyer as opposed to... Because there is something she is giving off that's not quite oh, it's, likable. It's probably right? mental illness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's it's some OCD, uh, something bad happened to her as a child, and now she feels like she has to be in control of everything. Uh, we all. I know you know this woman because you're describing her <laughs> so perfect. You've had this friend, Amy. You don't have to talk about who it is. <laughs> we know that you have this friend that you're just like, she hangs out in the circle of the other women, but all of you are like, we could lose her tomorrow and we wouldn't be mad. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I've seen it. Every white woman has one in their circle that they all like exist around, but they're like, uh. She's here because we've known her since college. Yeah, yeah. And we haven't been able to rid ourselves of her yet. But 
Every right. year we're like, we'd be okay if you didn't come on the girls' trip, Maggie. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it's that kind of thing. Oh my gosh! I think too, like it, it it happens when you're on a tennis team or a bunco group. Like sometimes you just need that extra person, and everyone like every time she leaves, they're like, oh my god, she's a monster. That's what's a bunco group? Okay, yeah, I was about to say, what the hell is bunco? bunco. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I learned about it when I moved south. You're from the north, so you probably yeah. I've uh, lived here my whole life, never heard it. This is a, this is a class thing. It's no, I don't think so. I don't know. Maybe probably. it's old people. It might probably. be an old people thing. <laughs> yeah, probably. it's like a, a dice game that you play with like f- a minimum four women, okay. and then like you can do it with like sixteen. And like it's, I don't actually remember how you do it, but I remember there was dice and there was wine, and there's dice a dinner. Like wine. you do like a potluck like dinner or something. And then you talk shit and you throw dice and then you have to stand up and change based on who won what. And then, oh, you put money in and the person who wins the top gets some money. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So it's like bridge, but it's without like, having to yeah. think hard. All right. You do have to do math. So I hated it. But it was fun to hang out with people. Yeah. Yeah. Bunko okay. Group. So that's when you, uh, yeah, you have you people. You live, you learn. That's you have people in the group. You're like, she's so mean. <laughs> That doesn't make sense though. Well, you can't. You apparently you have to have twelve or more players. Oh, okay, okay. That's okay. why you can't kick anyone out. Oh uh, yeah, because you're like I would, I would lose her. Yeah. But damn yeah. it, <laughs> I, part of me feels like that's like how you live a, a life too. It's like a movie. Like there's always the character in the movie that are like. True. Oh, Richard or whatever who it is. Like, that's yeah, just Barbara. She's going to smoke cigarettes in the house. We've asked her so many times not to. And she's going to put them out on your white sofa. But, you know, she's a hoot. She's a character. Listen, that's not, but that's not the Karen. The one smoking in your house is usually a good time, okay? Yeah. She's a mess. And you don't, you want her to stop doing oh, it, yeah. but she's a good time. She's an alcoholic. Okay. She's, oh, yes. Yes. she's too fun. She's and, so fun. <laughs> Every Bunko group has the alcoholic, too. Good yeah. times with that one. That's a different kind of beast. Uh, totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, okay, so. Can I suggest one yes, yeah. some to you? Yes, please. Okay, I have noticed a culture with my white female friends of um, recipes and cookbooks. And I'm not saying black women definitely hand down what are technically recipes. Mm-hmm. But. Very much, and I don't know what this comes from, um, you know, but very much we've got a very oral tradition with mm-hmm. our recipes, probably save for baking, because baking you do need to be a little more scientific. Uh-huh. But I have noticed my white female friends love a recipe share. And then there started to be this thing when they'd get married that they're like, oh, for the bachelorette weekend, everyone bring, bring a, a recipe. recipe. We're going to make them a cookbook. And I was like, when I get married, please don't. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, baby. I, right. I don't need that cookbook. <laughs> I got one I, of those. You, you, I knew it. When I got <laughs> in my, my, my bridal shower. And I got to tell you what, my husband. I could have put money on it. Yeah, do yeah, I know yeah. white women, y'all, or do I know white yeah. women? My mom. Like, this one's a little spicy. uses Lowry's. <laughs> <laughs> Not even. <Yeah. laughs> black pepper. They're like, yeah. Ooh, it's hot. Ooh. spicy. <laughs> my mom can't only, handle black pepper. Only half a teaspoon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she can't handle it. My mom doesn't like cracked black pepper in her eggs. But my mom <laughs> does not cook. wild. And so I was like, she gave me like a pair of scissors when I got married. She's like, to open up your frozen dinners. And I'm like, thanks, mom. And <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. But she can't. Yeah, I got these recipes from like her friends that mm-hmm. cook or whatever. And the only person to use a recipe out of this cookbook is my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Which was nice. Yeah, he made um, a candy recipe and he, he, he makes it every year and he gives it out at Christmas. Man, that's what I mean. That candy recipe, not even some stuff that can sustain us. It's yeah. No, it's the cookbook <laughs> should be for the bachelor party. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> this is why I didn't want one or need one when I got married, because I was like, you know what we all know about me? I'm not going to open this thing. <laughs> Just don't don't come and bring yeah. me your Mima's snickerdoodle recipe. I'm going to look at you like, baby, what I'm not gonna do this weekend <laughs> is make your Mima a snickerdoodle. Right? <laughs> okay. I'm not gonna. Okay, I'm gonna swear. I'm not gonna fuck up my kitchen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then have to do dishes for two days it's to have a sweet treat that you can only eat a little bit of, and then it's too much sugar. Now I can cook some things, but anything I knew how to cook is just stuff I watched being made growing up, and like I never, I never got a recipe handed to me from nary a mother, nor aunt, nor grandmother. It's all just like, do you know how to make this? And then if I didn't know how to make something, I'd just call that aunt. Yeah, I called an aunt 
in hospice <laughs> because I said before she go make get. sure we know how to make her mac and cheese and I meant it I called her only child my cousin and I said it, it, did you get the mac and cheese recipe yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she was like no and th- then she got to the point where she wasn't talking much anymore and I'm like before she goes <laughs> I was so serious. Have her I was sign like, it out. Have her write it through her gurgling throat of cancer. Just yeah. write it down. <laughs> Literally, I know this is a rough time for you as her only child, but if you could make sure you do one she thing for the on. family. She lives on then. And then. Get that recipe. Don't let her go. <laughs> Instead of holding up the lion in the circle of life, you're holding up the Mac- casserole dish of macaroni and would, cheese. I think the only way it would have been inappropriate if they're like, you know she's dying of cholesterol problems. Oh. Right? <laughs> From her heart you're attack. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, she ate that every day, but it was so good <laughs> baby it was worth yeah, it i don't know what to tell to you <laughs> yeah dude dude that yeah that's rough but yes i feel that's did you really get it though white. what's that did you get the recipe yeah i was eat it out of it. i was <laughs> like don't let her go <laughs> was there something interesting in it that you weren't expecting you're like oh no she well. had i had kind of gotten it from her before but i just hadn't written it down and i was just like make sure before she goes like grab her hand and be like hey listen <laughs> before you cross over we got some important business there's i've heard too some southern women will not give you the proper recipe they'll leave something out because they want it to be their, their recipe <gasps> and it's not about living on through That's so generation foul. and generation of aunt so-and-so's <laughs> macaroni and cheese Pasta fricassee, I don't know, food words. And <laughs> I, it didn't sound like you did. And then people are going to make it and they're going to give you, they're going to have your name on it and it's not going to taste good. And then now everyone thinks, well, that woman was the terrible cook. And a matter of fact, she was a good cook. She just didn't want to share her secrets. That is, that is cruel. I think, especially if I well, want my death like bad. That's like white shit right there. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, like no. Yeah. Corporate <laughs> espionage <laughs> shit. Yeah. But for the housemaker, for the homemaker. Yeah. Because it's literally just like, I'm going to make my daughter seem fucking dumb one last time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Pepsi versus Coke. Yeah. Like, yeah. You'll never know. You'll be like, something's not quite right. And it died with Aunt Tilly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she was pissing in this. <laughs> what was her secret sauce? Was it was a cigarette. Still good, though. <laughs> cigarette butts. She put cigarette butts in this. It's ground up swept. volume <laughs> and that okay because i see this yeah casseroles now oh i have a question for mm. you i think i asked you this on on sunday when you're over was tuna noodle casserole something but your your parents are caribbean so you're not gonna have tuna noodle casserole well we grew up with caribbean, some caribbean. american you could pronounce it either way um we grew up with some american dishes because my parents have been here in this country is casserole the, the black thing Speak into the microphone. We we definitely, <laughs> I don't ever, I rarely hear black folks rarely saying we have a casserole. Once in a while, they use that term. It's not a term we use often. And it does feel like a very, very white, working class white thing to just dump everything. It's, it's, here's the thing. Let me be specific. My problem isn't I love the you. use. Thank you. It's not. I'll eat a good casserole. I want to emphasize the word good. What I've noticed with some of my white brethren and sister <laughs> is y'all will dump all kind of shit all in a casserole dish Cra- and cranberries. call it a f- you you made that up. They'll be like, "Oh, you've never had my my, my nana's peanut butter and string bean." ground beef casserole and you're like your grandma was broke Whack. went into <laughs> yes. broke ass went into that pantry yeah. put what she had to feed y'all and tell it y'all was, baby it's a hit it was the great depression it. people were starving and she had to just take a can of this a can of that and a can of that which is fine some but coffee grounds mix it up again other ethnicities have poor people food this is why i can't give white folks a pass yeah. <laughs> other ethnicities have some poor people shit that slaps asian people have it black people have it mm-hmm. latinos you know there's a lot you could do with rice and beans that are very filling white people will be like uh i just took this can of campbell's cream of whatever cream of mushroom i took, <laughs> I, I took some wonder bread celery. i like <laughs> <laughs> tore it up and then i found some grape jelly and now it's a meal and you'll be like <laughs> what did your mama try and sell you as a meal that right was, it was never and then you have to fight with your white friend to explain to them 
how that was not a real recipe and never should be. Because it was like, a mistake. No, it's a thing. You're not from Arkansas. And I'm like, nobody, <laughs> nobody does this. Please stop your yeah. bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> it's the, not a recipe. In the Midwest, casseroles are called covered dishes. <laughs> Yeah, and there's there's this okay, and I I'm gonna not go on the side of my people here. Um, <laughs> do not put sweet things in your casserole or your chicken salad. We're not putting grapes in there. We're not putting dried cranberries. Stop it. Stop putting mint jelly on turkey, or, or <laughs> lamb, or cranberry sauce. I think we're no, we're doing savory, and then you can have a sweet at the end. You can't make your save your savory a sweet. This isn't Elizabethan England where you put sugar and stuff to show everyone how much money you have you know what i will say i think mint jelly is the kind of condiment that was of a time the 50s probably yeah like i think there was a time you know things go in and out of style this right what, oh sorry like fashion and yeah. language and it's the same with what we eat it goes in and out of style and i think there was a time when everything minty was real cool it was the time of the mint julep and the mint jelly and the mint this and that uh, and i think over time people decided we were not interested this anymore. is what too, i think they invented um artificial coloring like the <laughs> atomic bomb exploded and then they also figured out artificial flavoring the same year and they're like let's make jelly bright green and people are going to lose their minds it's good yeah it's so strange. It, it, listen, Jello, all and, and this convenience for them, the 1950s, and that's what casseroles are. I think they were invented by the in the 1950s by. Well, I guess lasagna might have been the OG casserole. Now, lasagna is an actual dish for it's me. It's yummy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It is an actual dish that our Italian Americans, our hardworking Italian Americans, brought to this country. Uh, the, <laughs> they love that. They love yes. when you call them hard. <laughs> <laughs> you Call have to do hard that. Working, not, yeah. not hairy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. And uh, and I, see, and this is why I say not it, it, being white is no excuse because the Italians <laughs> brought Italian. so many. Yes, and but, they brought so many fun dishes that don't cost a lot of money, and they gave yeah. us that. And the, then some, their canned goods were like um, the fish, like the which uh, the salty small fish. What sardines? Sardines. 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 And there's another one, something. Uh, yeah. And then canned tomatoes, like their convenience food mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. still not cream of mushroom. Just condensed. not making things up. I think that's really where you lose me when it's clear that yeah. your mama used to make stuff up, and you're gonna try and argue with me. Argue with your mama. You know? Argue, yeah, it was <laughs> argue real. with like people doing advertisements in the fifties. The, all Absolutely. these recipes came off the back of a Campbell's soup can. They were just trying to sell soup, and they invented this stuff, and it was convenient. And people were shoved back. So during um, World War II, and actually prior to that, women could work more outside the home. And then when the men came back from World War II. They shoved all the women back into the kitchen, and no one wanted to cook anymore. And so they had to make up all these silly, easy things to make. Uh, so yeah, that's why it's all yucky. It wasn't made with love. No, it was made, it's no, a, it was convenient. I have a joke about this. Uh, I think the tuna noodle casserole is a protest marching across the Formica countertops of the nineteen sixties <laughs> and fifties, and we're lucky it doesn't call for cigarette butts. Like, <laughs> I do love that. Although I have had a decent tuna casserole before, I'm gonna give I you. Do, this. I like a tuna casserole. I've had some but decent. Ones. I explained it to my friend Jose. And he made the worst face I've ever seen. You know, but there's 8 billion people in the world and white people are the only ones eating tuna hot <laughs> in a casserole. Possibly. Yeah. <laughs> they just like do a sear or a raw, like in Japan, the tuna's raw. And you know what I think is very specific to, Am it's American for sure. And I didn't realize it till I did a study abroad in college. Um, the box mac and cheese with the uh, Powder. powdered cheese. Yeah. I tried explaining that to my senora, the Spanish woman who let me live with her for half a year. And she said in Spanish, gross. It's not, <laughs> Instantly. She, es verdad. Because si. all she heard was my description in my poor Spanish of being like, so you're taking macaronis. And she's like, right. And macaroni can mean something different over there, too. It's not necessarily like the little elbow shaped pasta that we're dealing with and it, so I was like you're taking macaroni and you're taking powdered cheese and I lost her instantly <laughs> she was like this powdered. is yeah especially in the Mediterranean like this is Spanish, Spain where they have like manchego and stuff like this and she just I lost her and I was never going to get her back yeah. <laughs> like, it's like I don't want American food it's fine <laughs> 
She doesn't need to have it. It doesn't taste good. It's just uh, sentimental. It is sentimental, I think. Because when you eat like real like baked mac and cheese, there's no comparison yeah. between those two the, dishes. The one, the frozen one at Whole Foods is really good. Have you tried it? The frozen one? Yeah, like they make it and mm-hmm. they put it in the freezer so you can take it home and put it in your ice. It's very, that's a very good mac Never and cheese. I, I was like, oh, damn. That, that is better. That I'll slaps. try it. Okay. <laughs> We're almost to the end here. We've done an hour. Okay. And I just want to, um, real quick, I want to do a shout out to white women who bossy ass white woman who did something good and then you do bossy ass black ladies who did something good do you have any memorized or you want to go first um you no wanna... you go first okay so, could... so abigail adams and i i worked i tried to make this a joke but it, no one cares um abigail adams was uh went go went on a trip she was the well, abigail adams was the wife of john adams who's one of our founding fathers in boston and her husband was at the time working in england as an an embass embassary What's that called? Uh, ambassador. That's it. <laughs> Look at this fancy education over here. I went to public school. Worth every penny. On a dirt road. <laughs> yeah. Um, so but look at you now, baby. <laughs> I know. Um, so she was afraid to go on the ship to visit her husband. I think he might have been in France at that time. Anyway, he did both. She gets on the ship. She's terrified it's going to go down. Mm-hmm. They have a bunch of kids. Mm-hmm. They go. They start going, and she realizes the sailors who are doing the cooking aren't washing their hands they're barely cleaning the kitchen she gets up in there she's like she made this little tiny woman a buck ten is how much she weighs and she's like me, 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 me. and then she made the sailors clean the kitchen and like use sanitary things so she understood this is before germ theory right yeah but i mean i'm sure people knew like if you don't if you don't so clean it you're gonna get level sick of- understanding yeah. sanitation but there were still people who didn't understand yeah. germs and they did time. it they listened to her they didn't punt that cunt into the ocean <laughs> she just did it and that's hilarious i want that t-shirt punt uh, that cunt. Punt that good <laughs> and then florence nightingale went to the crimean war and she had to be really sweet about it she's like i'll just help i'll just carry this lamp around she wasn't southern but uh carry this lamp around and she uh, help what she could and like she finally like overhauled the whole hospital she made them do laundry the soldiers wouldn't do laundry because they thought it was beneath them and she made she got like the higher ups to make them do it and mortality rates decreased by like 25 percent she went in there and like me 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 like whined at these people mm-hmm. and Karen I'm going to talk to your advisor and then so save lives with being um, a bossy white lady right. or whatever she was I, she, I don't know where she was from Florence so we're Lanko. celebrating using your your voice yes for good as opposed to just self promotion cutting in front of people getting online. on that <laughs> yeah getting on that bicycle before everybody else yes yeah. yes and I think that's the difference you know you can be as a woman you can use your voice you can be, if you're going Karen, ever so often we need a Karen, baby. Ever so often we're like, whomst will speak up? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who will speak yeah. up when it's necessary? I saw this happen. There were these old people trying to get into a door in a deli in New York City, and they were very little, and there's a bunch of people, and this one white woman was like, these people need some space. Like she start, she used her voice to there like make go. space for the old people who were getting pushed around and going to fall down. You know what? And that's that's the white woman I want to be. You know, (laughs) I want to be that white woman who can speak up for the little guy, speak up for every man and not just for selfish needs or self-promotion. You know what I mean? And so there's nothing wrong with women having a voice. And I don't want it to be uh, one of those things where it sounds like that's what we're trying to do is silence women. We are not. But use your voice. at the. I think we all know when it goes awry. It's when there's there's enough video now. <laughs> yes. When they get enough white wine. Yeah. Yes. yeah. There's enough video footage now of white women run amok. Run amok. <laughs> run amok. Run amok. <laughs> that we know what it looks like. And Pointing we can at say, people on the airplane. Yeah. Can we just stop just it, insane everybody? Insane people. But, stop it. Yeah. Oprah. Shout out Oprah. Yes. Using a voice. Listen, there's been some Oprah backlash these last few oh, years. Oh, so what happened? I don't know. I think right now it's a lot of people, it's it's become a trend, especially online, to take everything people were into 20, 25 years ago and be like, it was bad, right? Oh. And she did have a lot of cultural influence. But I think what makes me mad is I'm like, we finally get a black, listen, we can all say all billionaires are bad all day long. But what makes me mad is we finally get a black woman to that status and suddenly everybody knows billionaires are bad. 
<laughs> let her, let her have some fun. Yes, <laughs> I'm like, there have been bad white men for how many eons? <laughs> and now they're like, but Oprah. And I'm like, you let... I yeah. don't care what sh- what I skeletons think, are in her closet. Shut up about it. Yeah, I think the last like <laughs> one person who had that much wealth and power was Cleopatra. <laughs> yeah, you that's know, how long ago it was. And it wasn't even just the money; it was her cultural influence. And what always like what I will say: what used to be some white women shit, it's not today because she doesn't have the show anymore. But twenty years ago, had we played this game, I would have said Oprah. Yeah, mm-hmm. white women used to scream when she. You remember oh, that moment? I love. I she is my god. She is. She <laughs> continues to be. My grandmother says she was not a good mother to my mother because they didn't have Oprah yet. Like no <laughs> one knew how to have feelings, and Oprah came on and taught us how to have feelings and taught us like how to wear the white right bra. White women used to throw their panties at mm-hmm. that. <laughs> They'd be like, There's yeah. just a middle class white woman thing where they did love oprah um since she no longer has the show i find like you know people don't this generation doesn't care as much but 20 years ago she would be on the list of white women's favorite things and i thought how cool is it that this black woman who didn't come from money didn't come from status just kind of worked her way up to Mm -hmm. her own very successful brand and business and then it crossed over and she found success with people who didn't look like her and i mean man people are giving her shit for it today but i yeah it is is too bad because i'm like she worked she worked real hard now listen helped people it's, and there she had probably, a show every day. If you have a show every day, you're not going to do the right step every day. Everybody's closet got some level of little skeleton Gales in there, and baby. Oprah's closet. I, I, oh, I, oh. I, no, I do she, think so. I think there's some cute. Oh, Stedman's in Oprah's closet wearing a Gale outfit. Man, <laughs> Stedman ain't been doing... I wish I had Stedman's life, really. He don't have to do nothing but be in the background for the last 40 years. He plays but, a lot of golf. Yes. Yeah, and he's golf. living an Oprah level of lifestyle but he don't have to break his back literally or figuratively yeah. <laughs> on that woman. How nice. How nice to be a kept man. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah. I said, I'll be making Gail and Oprah little treats for after their rendezvous. <laughs> <laughs> like, listen, you gotta get those electrolyte bets up. You, you guys always have a good time. Anyways, look at this little craft project I did today. <laughs> I would love. Yeah. I would love to see you as a kept stedman. Oh, I'd be so good as a kept man. <laughs> yes. I yeah. Your creative spirit. Because I would do fun little projects. I'd have my little podcast, and then I'd be like, "All right, well, I'm gonna go home and go cook." Uh, cook Why now. not? Yeah. I would jump into Stedman's grave today. Like, oh, yeah. I would so switch ready. places with him so quickly. <laughs> I bet. No, I wonder too. Like, how much she even has time for him? Because she's still doing. She's got a network. Even better. That's why, <laughs> that's why I have a little project so he can stay busy. Oh I just God. told a friend today, this is a true text I sent to a group of friends today, uh, and I said that there's no greater gift a man could give a woman than a lot of wealth and nothing but free time, okay? Just just let me be mm. your kept woman and then leave me alone. If they're like, oh, but he never spends time. He's always off with He's his always hobbies. off golfing. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding? To have access and agency and time and he's not asking shit of me bravo on you i love that i love that lifestyle gimme 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 yeah yeah i think i think that's what melania had uh, like made and then he ran for office and she's like what yeah (laughs) this is not what i signed up for exactly (laughs) now she has to do well pretend to do shit that's what oh yeah that's she that's why she took long to get to the white house she was renegotiating her prenup because it wasn't like oh i'm sure i'm sure she was like this was not i have to decorate the white house for christmas (laughs) (laughs) i'm sure she was like i don't want to stay there i have a cooler place back yeah. in uh where I hear are they? call the racist in florida yeah <laughs> i'm the right in, kind of white immigrant i think for she them. was in it's yeah so she was true. in new york um so i guess like she and her parents are a unit and they like all go around together and i think baron now too and they only speak in her native tongue and donald trump has no idea what they're saying so she's, I love it. I love it. I know it they right. hate him. They you call, know they hate him. They, they call him the devil Cheeto. <laughs> they absolutely hate Their native hate him. tongue. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, it's okay. Yes, we've done it. So, Carla, uh, tell everyone where they can see you. Um, where can you see me? Well, you know, I run a few shows across town if you want to come out. In Atlanta. With Georgia. my hubby. Um, oh, yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, tonight we're at one of them. Last Wednesday of Whoa. every month, we're at Three Taverns Brewery 
out on the east side. Um, that's uh, in Decatur. And then... Uh, Which is the white town. That is... It's pretty white. Oh, it, yeah. Well, first of all, brewery is going to be... There's like one or two breweries that are black owned and have a cater to a black clientele. But for the most part, you're walking to a brewery, you know what you're getting. So <laughs> three taverns brewery last Wednesday of every month. And then we're over at West Side Paper first Friday of every month. Um... We do a show right out there in their courtyard, West Side Paper. And I have a little podcast of my own. This would seem to be some white women shit, but we are opening your eyes to something that even black folks love. Uh, we have a podcast called Down and Nappy. <laughs> I love that name. And it is it's a so black good. girl's guide to Downton Abbey. I co-host that with uh, two other Atlanta comedians Brittany Dent and Jasmine Waters. Yeah, that's a, it's hilarious. It's a great podcast. Thank you. Yeah. As is yours. I love this. And I'm so thrilled that you invited me to be here twice now. Yes. Um, I'm a repeat. This is like on Saturday Night Live when people get to <gasps> repeat host. Guests? Yeah, if you, yeah come, if, you, if you come and co-host five times, I'll get you a jacket like they get on there, a blazer. Yes, thank you. Or smoke Ooh. a smoking jacket. I would <gasps> love it. A cape. We Looks should like do a Ma cape, Matthew's Joel. Matthew's very close. I think he's... Three. three. Yeah, Matthew's three. been on three times. Okay, I, I think we should more. do uh, <laughs> embroidered capes, like monogrammed capes. <laughs> would love that. Smoking capes. Smoking. They're vapes. Cape vapes. Cape vapes. Va uh, capes that you vape in <laughs> instead of a smoking you know, I jacket. I telling you that you have ADHD. Yes. This, this is one of them. That's <laughs> is that ADHD? Yes. Like, it's assist. great. You could brainstorm by yourself. You don't even need a group. Oh, there's, <laughs> there's just, voices in the head. Yes, there I, absolutely Just keep leading yourself to <laughs> <laughs> a grand uh, conclusion. All right. Thank you so much for coming. I love you. I love you too, baby. Mwah. All right.